basement. The only two floors that have sprinkler protection is currently this ground floor and the basement. That's it. The other 10 floors and, and the parking garage. That is it. Everything else does not have any type of sprinkler. We have our fire extinguishers on that side and that side and for your <laughs> to put out a fire that's that's going to be the be the way to get to them. The building was never designed for sprinklers on upper floors? Well, like okay, I said, it's not working. From what we were told is that it was a, a cost issue at that point when they were doing the last final approval to get all the sprinkler systems done and it was one of the things that was not thought through. Uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed that uh, trailer that's sitting out here. That is our current backup generator. The old one is right here. Uh, the system has just served its life. Um, right now we have a transfer switch here and you see these giant cords that run here. Like I said with Lieutenant Hicks, with that being kind of outside of our building envelope, that is a security concern. So if we ever had a power outage and if somebody wanted to, something could happen to the building, they could pull our backup generator and we've actually had that issue. When we tried to flip it over to test it, we found out that there was wires out there loose. So that is a main concern that we deal with here. Um, also while we're here, the sprinkler system here, that is the, the system there. Now, technically by code now, we would need to have a backflow preventer on that fire system, which we currently do not have. So that would be an, a, a concern as well. And obviously this is only for those two floors. So obviously you can imagine the size of piping that we would need if it was to do all 12 floors and the wings. And you currently see that we're underground. Also, you can see the concrete construction here. So even logistically trying to get this generator out of here, just you see that door, that's the only way out of here, correct? There's a, I think there's another side door, but this is it. So therefore, any of this bigger machinery, when it breaks down, they have to repair it in place. There's, uh, a couple months back, I had sent the letter letting council know about the concerns we had about the hot water. This is the hot water heating system, so it's a boiler system. It's just the hot water that provides heat to the building. The concern was, is when it's up under here, it's under this insulation, we don't know the condition of the pipes. And so, uh, what wing was it, Johnny? It was the uh, it was the east wing. We had that pipe failure where it just totally corroded and, and burst. And so we had hot water, everything kind of shooting out. And if you've noticed, between here and wherever we are, there are no cutoff valves. So therefore, if it does, say if it breaks here, we're almost having to run all the way back into the building to find any type of cutoff to isolate the issue. There would just be hot water spewing out. So. We have about, we have uh, somewhere between 200 and 300 boxes like this all over the building. So therefore, that was the concern, is that at any place, either coming in or going back out, you can see this condensation. If it's happening up under that insulation, it's just sitting there and rusting that pipe out all the time. So that was the concern there. So we wanted to show you this one. This is probably one of the worst we've got. The rest of them aren't as bad. We've done investigations to kind of isolate the worst of the worst. Um, we scheduled to have a mechanical uh, contractor come in start next month to start working on this. We have them in each one of each one of these all the way down to the end. Correct. Okay, and this is just the records room and the deed room. That's correct. It's on the other end. The other. Yes, ma'am. Um, also, we'd like to point out, you'll start to see some more of these, which is portable cooling units mm -hmm. to maintain the temperatures in the building because um, any of our air conditioning systems are coming off those windows and any of, um, like I said, depending on if you're on the south side of the building all day, you're burning up, then you're on the other side of the building, you're freezing. So <laughs> there's no, and with the whole system being one system, they're not split into zones or anything like that, they just have to set a temperature and you just kind of have to <laughs> live with the situation. So you will start to see more and more of these as we go into people's offices because either they're too hot or too cold and having another way to be able to regulate the spaces is just not set up. Yes, sir. By any current standards, these are not ADA compliant. You don't have your turn radiuses, you don't have your grab bars, you don't have your um, you. handicap accessible restroom, you don't have it. It's not, and you know, everybody's like, well just make the, just make the restroom bigger. But you have offices that are all around them 
that would make that a little bit, um, well, not a little bit, a lot harder. You don't have your five foot clear turn radius here. So if somebody with a wheelchair were to come in here, they're stuck right here. They can't use these bathrooms. The ones that we did install on the first floor are um, handicap accessible, but if you're on any of the other floors, you do not have access. You, like I said, you get right here in a wheelchair, you could not get anywhere. These are the original wheels. Ben and Joy, I'm going to just. The other thing we have to store for six years, and I'm happy to shred after six years, are the gun permits. All of this and all of those are weapons carry licenses and people's criminal background checks. Um, so we're, as you can see, we're literally running out of space for this as well. For a courtroom, uh, we in in counties in which the population is over 90,000 people, as of to 1998, you have a right to a 12-person jury trial to decide whether or not the gold digger should uh, receive the benefits under the will. Um, so we have to have a jury box for that. But as you can see, you can't even put the plaintiff's table and the uh, respondent's table side by side. We have them turned this way because the involuntary psychiatric commitment <laughs> respondent sits in that corner there, and before when we had the tables turned a different way, uh, one of them tried to attack the lawyer that was trying to have them committed. But now they're, uh, this, is a, this is about as safe as we're gonna get. But you also notice there is no way to get to it. So we have the chase that's on the penthouse, it goes all the way down. And in, and in the basement. But there's, there's some access ports we will show you that will kind of make that point. So if we were to want it to expand the HVAC system or do things like that, we physically would have to tear the building down to get to it. I mean, 12th floor all the way down. So we don't have, the, exactly. And so if we needed to come in and replace pipes on whatever floors, you could just imagine the nightmares of trying to get to them because A, you'd have to fight past these pipes. Two, there's no type of you know maintenance egress talked about in here at all. So this is one of the biggest issues for everybody who wants to say, well, let's retrofit this building, let's try to do this. Physically, mechanically, the guts of the building trying to get to them to make them work like I said, you, I mean, this is stories down. There's no supports. There's just supports no. for the pipes. There's no way for us to no get to it. No, nope, that's correct. Nothing. Just if you if you stuck your head in, you look straight down. <laughs> There's nothing there. And the other other access is at the very top, where we're at the at the penthouse, where the boiler room runs. There there are days that, you, that we come back here, and this place is. You're lucky if you have a seat. Sometimes they're standing up here. This place is packed full, and they're waiting for their name to get called. And this is where we hold them when they go up to all of the courts. Um, <laughs> well, it all depends. We say a lot of angry men, but sometimes this is their day for justice, their day to be able to. So you have a lot of hopeful people sitting in here, um, but at times it does get angry. And if you think about packing people in here, people are frustrated, angry, ready to go. Or after they get handed down a verdict, and we have to bring them down here and get put in. So it's very volatile in here at all times. Take you down, and then we will. Uh, then I'm gonna hold you down in the holding area down there. I'm gonna go back up and down. And, and, and move you all up and down. Yeah. That's a lot, to say the least. Uh, once you get in the elevator and you realize when I'm transporting or when these, these young men right here are transporting um, multiple individuals, mm -hmm. it gets real tight. And not to, not to mention that this is also the judges that are the elevators the judges use to go to their, their offices. So if y'all would go ahead and step inside. If we could pack it as full as, as we can. Over here too? Yep. Wow. Need to get in the cell. Oh, oh, oh. All right, I think we got enough. Mike, if I get you to slide, or, there you go. You gonna run this yeah. for me? All right, so keep this in mind. This, this, this elevator gets used quite often. All right, we've had judges get stuck in, in this elevator. We've had inmates and officers get stuck in this elevator. And getting stuck isn't just, hey, we're stuck. Now you gotta call the elevator crew. So you can be stuck in here for a couple hours. As you can see, the mayor parks here. The city manager parks here. All right. And this is where we have to unload inmates at. 
If you're coming to get a job, we're unloading murderers and people that are on trial for murderers, and you have to come up through here and you'll see a, a van or a car parked here as we're getting inmates out. One that provides serious safety uh, and security risk for the officers, because if I want to come break somebody out, I don't, there, we have no protection. All right. And two, if, uh, if I want to do harm to another inmate, or if one decides to run, where do we have to, to keep them from running, if you think about it? It's wide open. If one wants to run, it's wide open. So we have to be on our, our, our <clears throat> top security level conscience and making sure we're blocking all avenues right here. All right? But this is our sally port. This is how we deliver. And, and while we're doing that, judges are coming in. And like I said, judges and inmates take the same elevator.